Let's head back down to Victoria now and catch up with Liberal Senator for the great state of Victoria, Sarah Henderson. Thanks for joining us, Sarah. Gee, it must be feeling a little bit, uh, you know, you're feeling under pressure a bit as, as a Victorian at the moment. I, as a former South Australian, I'm, I'm used to Victorians bagging South Australia, but now you're getting people arrested trying to sneak their way out of your state into South Australia. Well, Chris, uh, good afternoon. And uh, it is still a great state of Victoria. I'm very proud to represent Victoria as a Liberal senator. But certainly we are, uh, as you mentioned earlier in the program, seeing a slight flattening in the number of new cases in Victoria. Our government is working very closely with the Victorian government, and it's pleasing to see that other state governments are also assisting. It is a, a very concerning time at the moment. and. Uh, all I can say is terrible result with 10,000 people refusing to be tested. And I really hope that that changes, that every person, particularly in a hotspot area, agrees to a test because that's part of how we can flatten the curve. Yeah, how do we deal with this? Do we make it compulsory? Do we issue penalties if people won't be tested? It's a, it's a difficult area, isn't it? No, look, I don't think we can do anything like that. We can appeal to the good sense of all Australians. And I think we have seen a remarkable response from all Australians uh, in the face of this coronavirus pandemic, Chris. It, it has been amazing. Uh, but we just have to remind Victorians how important it is to be tested because the fear is that someone could die as a result of this spike of cases in Victoria. It is very, very serious. And the more people who are tested, the easier it is for health authorities to combat this wave of uh, new cases. Now, you've uh, been very active uh, in the debate over China. Uh, Hong Kong, of course, it's tragic to see what's happening there effectively. Uh, uh, the agreed framework there is, uh, has fallen apart. Uh, uh, the, um, the, the, the Hong Kong autonomy that uh, we expected to last another few decades uh, is, is being whittled away. Uh, how many Hong Kong citizens do you think could be welcomed into Australia on special visas? How many should we be prepared to take and, and uh, what will that do with our relationship with China? Well, Chris, there is no doubt the situation in Hong Kong, and obviously it is deteriorating very rapidly, is incredibly alarming. And I also say that as the chair of the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Human Rights. Uh, we are seeing breaches of human rights. There is no doubt about it. An absolute breach of the UK Sino uh, Declaration and uh, a breakdown in uh, proper law and order in Hong Kong. And, of course, now China has suggested that Australia should not interfere. Well, uh, as the Prime Minister has said, we are looking at how we can provide more Hong Kong residents with a safe haven here in Australia. And that is a matter that will go before the cabinet in the coming weeks. Uh, we have a wonderful visa and immigration system as it is already where we do consider every person's application on its merits and particularly in relation to our humanitarian uh, acceptance of those who come to Australia. But it is, uh, frankly, it's, uh, it's getting quite frightening. Yeah, it, it is a great worry. I think I used uh, the, the wrong name for that agreement there too. I think I chucked in the, the, uh, the, the Korean agreement no, nomenclature there. But uh, we'll leave that for now and we'll follow that because I think there'll be a lot of support in Australia for people uh, helping out uh, those, uh, those people stuck in Hong Kong. Uh, I want to ask you about the by-election in Eden Monero tomorrow. Uh, a lot has gone wrong for the Labor Party. They've got these uh, co corruption allegations, uh, the uh, Chinese political interference allegations in New South Wales as well. Uh, surely a government ought to be able to pick up the seat in this situation? Well, it will be a very tough uh, seat for us to win, but uh, if the people of Eden Monero want stability, want to be part of the government, which is focused on jobs and economic certainty, uh, then please vote one Fiona Cott Voice. She is an amazing local candidate, a great businesswoman. Uh, she's a doer and, of course, so, uh, by voting for Fiona, uh, she will be part of the government and only the Morrison Liberal government can get things done. She, she was such a great candidate. I don't know why they had two state ministers trying to grab the pre-selection spot from her, but we've got no time to talk about that. Sorry. Thanks for joining us again, Sarah Henderson. <laughs> Yeah, great to talk to you, Chris.